Hi everyone. So in this video we're going to discuss the concept of resonance structures in the Lewis model. So far when we talk about Lewis structures, all the molecules we discuss have only one Lewis structure, okay? And in which all the atoms obey the octet rule. Now we're going to talk about molecules where there are more than one correct Lewis structures and all of these structures obey the octet rule. We'll start by presenting an example of this type of molecule. And that example will be ozone, which is the molecule O3. If you look at ozone, if you want to draw the lowest structure, the number of valence electron would be 6 for each oxygen, and then since there's 3 oxygen, we're going to have 18 electrons. Okay? Since we only have oxygen, our skeletal structure would look something like this. And now it's a matter of putting all the electrons around the oxygen atoms. And you can do them one by one like this. So I put one, two, three pairs already, and then I have another two, so this five pairs already, so ten electrons already placed. I can put another six right here. That means I only have a pair left, which is this right there. Okay? So remember, that's the first thing you have to do, is you have to place all the valence electrons. You can't exceed the number of valence electrons that you have in your total. Okay? So if you count here, you have 18. Okay? One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, which is 18 pairs total. Now it's clear from looking at this that the middle oxygen doesn't satisfy the octet rule, so I can fix this structure by creating double bond. And what I would do here is take one of these lone pair and move it here to make a double bond. So that would be one structure, which is shown right here. Now, the next, if you're paying attention, at this point you should ask the same question that a lot of people ask, which is that, why can't I take this particular electron and move it here instead of taking the green one? Okay? And the answer is that you can. There's nothing that prohibits you from doing that in Lewis model. So you can have the following structure. Now, the question then is, which of the two is the correct structure? In one case, if you were to be able to label this oxygen, let's say you label this as oxygen 1, 2, 3 in both cases, obviously these two structures are not the same because in one case, between oxygens 1 and 2, you have a double bond. Uh, so let's call this structure A, for example. And in structure B, uh, between oxygen 1 and 2, you have a single bond. And vice versa, in structure A, you have a single bond between oxygen 2 and 3, and in structure B, you have a double bond. Okay? So, the question now is, which one is the real structure? And there really isn't any way to tell just by looking at the structure. So, the next thing you have to do is to go ahead and do an experiment and look at ozone and measure how long these bonds are. Right? So, what you have to do is measure bond length for both of these bonds to see if one of them, which one is the single and which one is the double? Is the one, two, the double bond, or is the one, two, a single bond, right? Then we can pick between whether structure A or structure B is the correct one. So what we will do now is test uh, our Lewis structures, A and B, that I showed right here. And we want to know which of the two is the correct structure. Now, prior to this experiment, there are already information about the length of oxygen-oxygen bond. And the single bond length in oxygen and oxygen is 149 picometers, as shown on this uh, valley right here. And then the length of a uh, oxygen-oxygen double bond is 121 picometers. So what we need to do now is look at ozone itself, and then measure the bond lengths of oxygen 1 and 2, and then oxygen 2 and 3, and see which of the two structures, A or B, is the correct ones. Here's A, here's B. So when this experiment was done, the result was the following. It turns out that the experimental result is completely different than what we predicted. First off, there's only one type of bond between the two oxygen atoms. So is the bond a single bond or a double bond? Well, it turns out that the bond length between oxygen 1 and oxygen 2, and between oxygen 2 and oxygen 3, is exactly the same bond length. And that bond length is 128 picometers. If you look back at the prior slide, this bond length is neither single or double, but somewhere in between. So then what's our conclusion at this point? The only conclusion that you can draw is that neither structure A nor B represents reality. The two structures we drew here, neither one of them is correct. Okay? So the concept of resonance was then developed and incorporated into the Lewis model. 
okay, to account for molecules that have more than one Lewis structures. So the idea is the following. Some molecules, for example, ozone, can have more than one correct Lewis structure. So when we look at the actual structure, we notice that this theor theoretically predicted structures, the Lewis structures, don't fit what we see experimentally. So as a result, to, in order to take the Lewis structure and make them represent the real structure, what we have to do is take a hybrid or an average of all the reasonable Lewis structures that we can draw for that molecule. What's the meaning of this? If you go to the ozone structure again, what you have now is two structures. Now, each of these structures, like we said earlier, we call them A or B, each of this is what we refer to now as a resonance structure. Neither A nor B is the correct structure, but the correct structure would be somewhat of a hybrid of both of these structures. So if we were to take this and we average the properties of these two structures out, what we would get would be a structure that is similar to the experimental structure. If you think about this, if you were to take an average, the first thing you'll see is that we would get a single bond electron density between the two oxygens because both of these resonance structures have at least a single bond, right? In one case, the double bond existed between oxygen 1 and 2. In the other case, the double bond existed between oxygen 2 and 3. So the best thing is to take an average, and so that would be half of the electron density would be right here, and the other half electron density would be right here. And that would be a representation of the structure of ozone, which would be the best representation that would uh, mimic the actual experimental structure. The bond length in this case is that it's a single bond plus some more electron density, so in other words, it's going to be a little bit shorter than a single bond, but will be longer than double bond because it's not a real double bond. One more thing I want to point out is that all resonance structures are usually represented as related to each other by this symbol, a double-headed arrow. Okay, So if you want to draw three resonance structures for a particular molecule, you would represent relate one resonance structure with the other one with this double-headed arrow. So here I want to make a couple of points before I close off the video about resonance structure. The first point is that resonance structures are theoretical constructs. In other words, they're not real. They don't exist. Okay, that's the first thing you have to get into your head. The second point is that the real structure, which is the experimentally observed structure, can be modeled or predicted if you were to take a hybrid or an average of all the resonance structures that you can draw. Okay. Last point I want to make is that do not interpret the double-headed arrow that you use to denote resonance to mean that the structures are flipping back and forth. Remember that resonance structures don't exist. We just use them because the structures help us predict what the real structure would look like by taking an average. So one thing I really want to emphasize is that don't interpret this double-headed arrow the same as this symbol right here, which is one arrow going to the right and the other arrow going to the left. The symbol represents equilibrium, which does imply flipping of back and forth. However, the double-headed arrow is not an equilibrium. It just is used to represent all the possible resonance structures that you can draw for a particular molecule.